Hey Baltimore, I'm Nick Mosby, president of your Baltimore City Council, standing here at the historic Morgan State University. This has been a jewel for our great city for over 150 years, educating students worldwide. Normally this campus will be bustling with students, faculty, staff, researchers, uh, but just like many sectors of our life, the coronavirus has crippled this campus. Right behind me is also a project that's creating jobs, that's bringing residential as well as commercial uh, aspects to this community uh, that desperately needs it. And just like we see the construction and the opportunity here, there's nothing but opportunity that is going to come out of this crisis. The data shows a deliberate and devastating but reversible pattern of inequity in distribution of this life-saving coronavirus vaccination. Policies are to blame for the inequities born in black and brown communities. But the good news is, now more than ever, we have access to the data, we must continue to identify the problem, and we must develop immediate fix. I have grown to know the real Nick Mosby. Look at his history in Annapolis, look at his track history here in Baltimore, band a box for one. His work and his advocacy for the people who are directly impacted by issues of housing, by issues of criminal justice reform. A lot of our elected officials, they will say it, and we need to do this, but I've actually seen him do it. See, in the midst of a global pandemic, when our restaurants, our small businesses were struggling, these applications were charging upwards of 30% off of every single order. We were able to utilize best practices and look at data and cap that feed of 15%. And I'm excited to know that this was the first law that we passed. The bedrock of our city's success is built on strong communities just like this. And we know we can't have strong communities without strong families, families that are thriving. That's why one of the first actions of the Baltimore City Council was to ensure that we went after housing security, providing opportunities for families to know that they had a warm place to rest their heads in the midst of this global pandemic. Your Baltimore City Council will continue to utilize data, look at best practices, and identify solutions and policies to go after and counteract the hardships of this coronavirus. I think I met Nick probably you know, 12 years ago. I was, uh, I'd moved to Reservoir Hill. He demonstrated his interest in just supporting community initiatives, his interest in including youth in our projects, in you know, building on those neighborhood assets and sort of strengthen communities from the inside. In Annapolis, I fought to ensure that families would no longer lose their homes based off of water bills. We've already taken action by asking the comptroller as well as the mayor to freeze upcoming water bill rate hikes. And I've requested the city solicitor to dig into the contracts associated with the water billing issues. I think we've made a tremendous amount of progress in the first 100 days to professionalize the office in a way that we have not seen our city council before. This council is going to be ripe and ready and prepared to take on more than just constituent issues. So going back to our days way back in high school at Poly, uh, Council President Mosby has always been that type of person who's been a passionate leader. He reached out to me to do an enough is enough prayer walk with him. And when we did the prayer walk, I was surprised because it was raining that day when I got there. So I thought we were just gonna pack up and go home. But he still wanted to do the prayer walk that day. And from that day to now, I knew he was the leader that we needed. Be more, expect more. Exposing young folks that are on non-traditional tracks to opportunities and jobs of tomorrow is what we need to do now more than ever. In our first 100 days, we've already developed local hiring policies, as well as ideas of providing resources to the school system to provide children on these tracks. It's really important that the jobs, the programs, the initiatives that the city's paying for, that small minority women-owned businesses have access to them. It's also important that we are providing real opportunities for our unemployed and underemployed citizens. Council President Nick Mosby and I go back many years. He understands the system. That's number one. Number two, he understands the people. And number three, he has credibility among the people. So uh, when, you, when you put all those things together, then you have the necessary ingredients to bring about true change in the community. We will be aggressively working to develop legislative fixes that fill potholes in the likes of mental health treatment. We will no longer just talk about education, 
but ensure that we're digging down deep into the issues around educational system and provide opportunities for better outcomes for our young folks. I know what it's like not to have enough. I know what it's like to have an opportunity to do better, but still feel disappointed because the opportunity isn't there for every kid on my block. I love Baltimore and I promise we will make change and progress and we will do it together.